All right, let's unbox this MB Quart amplifier. Five channels, mild awesomeness. Uh, first thing we got here, ooh, this is the impressive manual that I've been reading online for this. Uh, two pages of how to hook this thing up, and that is it. With a couple of really cheesy looking MB Quart stickers. Ugh. All right, what do we got here? Well, she's packaged well. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give MB Quart a little bit of credit on this. This thing looks bigger than any other five channel I've seen out there now. I mean, if that's something that you want to judge something by, oh, got here, remote, base level control. The Mbor 41, whatever the heck that means. This is not exactly assembled lightly in this box. Some stuff there. I'm just gonna go out this way with it. Oh. Well, she ain't small, that's for sure. She's got some heft to her. Oop. In the back here, warranty seal. Warranty void if seal is tampered with or broken. <sighs> I guess we shall not be cracking this one open. But, uh, she did pass her QC and, uh, she is made in China, so. I mean, there's gotta be a lot of quality in here. I mean, what, what amplifier that's great hasn't come from China? Oh, I'm sorry. No amplifier from China has really done great, but uh, we'll we'll see on this one. Um, yeah, I mean I'll give this one credit. If the specs come out, I mean this is one of the most powerful five channels on the market. I mean the only thing I've seen with a thousand watts in the on the sub channel, um, besides this one, was the uh, DD Audio D5 point one thousand, and um, that one. It goes for significantly more money than this. I paid 159 bucks. I mean, the problem I got with Maxonics is, I mean, their their amplifiers don't put out bad power, at least not not for how much you spend, but they rate them through the moon. And I don't think it would hurt their sales if they actually rated them right. But we're gonna see if this one actually does anything close to what it did. Again, I mean, I think I paid 140 bucks for this. It was 159 regular. Had a sale on it, grabbed it. Um, terminals don't look bad. Um, maybe I can use the Allen keys I got with the Belva in on this one. Because <laughs> this one doesn't seem to come with those uh, Allen keys. But a couple of uh, four gauge inputs. Um, looks to be about, I don't think those are eight gauge speaker inputs. Those might be 10 gauge. But they're, uh, Nice, clean looking, right in here. Um, they're not a pain in the ass stacked ones like you'll see. Like, I mean, that's the one thing I have with the DD Audio that I owned. I had the D5.1000 before my truck, and you know, these were stacked up high, and it really was a bitch hooking that thing up, especially when it's installed in a truck and you gotta move wires around. Um, this is gonna be significantly easier. The input side, you have got, you can see here, we got an independent part for the fifth channel. Um, you've got a channel five line input over here. You've got line inputs on this side for uh, channels one through four. You can run it in two channel mode. So if you've only got uh, two outputs on your deck, um, because I mean, quite frankly, I mean, if you're run, running a budget head unit, 
you're probably going to run a budget amp like this one. Uh, I don't see you running a thousand dollar deck and then spending 159 on the amplifier. Just my opinion. Um, you've got individual crossovers for each of the, the two pairs of channels. Um, you can run it in two channel, four channel, five channel mode. There is individual gains for each side. Um, I don't know if it's going to run that way either if I just run on two channels. So I don't know if you're going to have to individually gain each output or not. We'll find that out when we start testing it on the dyno. But um, it's not a it's not a bad looking amplifier. I mean, she's not an under the seat amp, that's for sure. I mean, we're going to see what it can do. We're going to hook it up on the dyno and we're going to see uh, what does it actually produce. Damn you, Mech Sonics! You lied to us again!